Hi, how are you? I hope you're well. I thought I would drop in and do this week's video blog about the Davina McCall documentary that was on Channel 4. I watched it on Wednesday. Um, I was really looking forward to it because I love Davina McCall and I just really felt like it was going to be really empowering for women and I was completely spot on. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, I'd highly recommend it. If you're not menopausal yet, I'd also recommend it because it can give you an idea of uh, things to come, I guess. Um, but it's just about educating and understanding what's going on. And this has been one of my bugbears for a really long time. Like we're not really taught much about hormones other than like, oh, you're going to get your period at some point and it's probably going to be horrible. And then you're going to try and get pregnant and you might worry about your hormones then. Um, and then menopause and that's the end of the story. But as they said quite rightly in the documentary, and I've been saying to my patients for years, menopause happens at around 50. And uh, back in the day, you turn 50, your life's over, you divide your kids at like 15 anyway, and you'd essentially just be old and waiting to die. And that is not the modern 50 year old woman. They're vibrant with young children and businesses and jobs and partners and social lives. And, um, you know, you could live for maybe 30 years after your menopause, um, but you want to live in good quality of life and feeling amazing. So the take homes from the documentary really is that if you're suffering with menopause, seek help, either from someone like myself or your GP. Um, there are good HRT options now available from the GP. It's not just the old um, horse's urine anymore. Um, there's good plant-based patches, gels like Estragel and Sandrina, the body identical progesterone, Eutrogestan, um, the vaginal treatments as well. So seek help if you're struggling. If you feel you need something more bespoke, you would see someone like myself in that case. Um, Dr. Newson was the doctor in the documentary. She's done amazing work raising awareness about hormones and taking hormone therapy, as is Dr. Panay, who was also in the documentary. Um, and the reason why I think this is so amazing is because when I first started prescribing hormones, um, which has been very regularly since about 2013, um, this sort of stuff was not widely available. And even though it was made by drug companies, things like the Estragel and the Eutrogestan, people couldn't get it from their GP. It wasn't widely known. And it's because of people speaking out, doing the research, um, being spokespeople, that this is now available and women have more choices. And that's what it's all about for me, women having choices, not having their life taken away from them purely because they're a woman and they go through something like the menopause. So um, definitely seek help, speak to your GP or speak to someone like myself. Now, um, something else that was a really big take home from the documentary was talking about the breast cancer risks. And I get asked this every single week in clinic and it was really beautifully explained in the ball pit. Um, if you haven't seen it, you'll, you'll know what I mean when you watch the documentary. So essentially, the increased risk of breast cancer per thousand women taking HRT is five per thousand, which is exactly the same as if you drink, um, I think it's two glasses of wine a day, uh, or two, sorry, two units a day. So it's equivalent of like one large glass, really. Um, but if you are obese, then your risk goes to 25 increased risk of 25 per thousand. So we can see alcohol and HRT are kind of similar, but with the weight, that actually massively increases your risk. So it's just putting these risks into um, context, really. Now, um, what I would say is that a lot of my patients come to me in menopause struggling to lose weight because they've had a bit of menopausal weight gain around the middle, they are tired, they can't sleep, um, they feel anxious, they have brain fog, they have no motivation. So sometimes taking hormones can improve those things and then give you the motivation to go on and, and lose weight and exercise and eat better. Because when you're feeling rubbish, it's very hard to make good choices, isn't it? So um, that's a little take home for me. Um, something else that was really helpful, I thought in the documentary, was just highlighting that it's not just about hot flushes, it's also about anxiety, brain fog, motivation, 
aches and pains, skin changes, hair changes, lack of confidence. Um, I've seen all these things with my patients. Of course I have, I see thousands of people, but I'm really glad that more people are now learning about this because it's so important. Um, and the last thing I wanted to touch on, which I think is really important and not enough people talk about it, is vaginal symptoms. So I always ask my patients about low libido, low sex drive. And a lot of the time it's due to dryness, um, or the technical terms, vaginal atrophy. Um, and this does not need to be something you suffer with. There are vaginal estrogens that can help in pessary or cream. There are also some other treatments that I offer as well. Um, and that's really important because when there's a vaginal problem, it really affects the way you feel about yourself as a woman. So there's definitely help available for all these things. So focus, brain fog, um, I had someone ask me the other day, you know, I'm well past menopause now because I was, a, you know, due HRT when all the scandal was around and people were being discouraged from taking HRT. But um, is there anything I can do now for my brain fog? And there certainly is. There are great supplements for this. Um, there could be some weaker um, estrogens or the estrogen stimulating supplements that bind to the receptors that don't stimulate cancer cells that could be options. So again, I just want you to know you have options. I mean, I'm not menopausal, but I know from other issues I've had hormonally, you can feel really lost and just controlled by your body as a woman and not in a good way and be like, oh, well, you know, I've got these horrendous periods. I, I feel awful for a week, a month. I got to change my social life. I can't exercise at certain times of the month. This is not acceptable um, and we as women can expect more and should demand more. So I just want you to know there are options out there and um, if not with myself, do your research online. Um, I will speak to your GP also and um, I hope that was helpful and look forward to speaking to you again next week. Take care. Bye.